Well, hello and welcome to Jonathan from the Heart. I'm Jonathan Asley of JonathanAsley.com and I'm so excited to be doing this short video for you today. We're gonna to talk about what you can say to a guy to make him just make, he'll be thinking about you all the time. He can't help himself think about you when you do this, okay? <laughs> when you say this. All right, really quickly, if you're brand new to my YouTube channel, please hit the subscribe button, hit the bell so you can be notified of new videos. And if any time during this video, this content resonates with you, please hit that like button so I can be seen in the YouTube algorithms. Really quickly, these are my weekend videos I shoot out on my balcony, very similar to the videos I shoot in my private group called Midlife Love Mastery. This is a group where you can have direct access to me on a regular basis, and based on the questions you ask, I, pers I shoot personalized videos just for you. So check out the link below to my VIP group. All right, we're going to talk about what you can say to a guy to make him think about you. He'll be thinking about you a lot. Now, I think it's important to address some of the bigger issues going on in today in the dating realm because it is a real train wreck out there to be dating. I know so many people feel a significant amount of frustration, a significant amount of, of, of anxiety, a significant amount of just like lack of hope. And this is true of men and women alike. This isn't singular to women. This is true for men as well. It is very difficult today to really connect with someone because these days for the most part, and this is the sad part, we're meeting total strangers. And I want you to think back to, you know, hundreds of years ago, most of the time when people made it, it was in the, the town, the village they lived in. And as we progressed into here, at least in the United States, when we progressed into the 40s, 50s, and 60s, it might have been in college or it might have been in your work environment where you met someone. And why I'm sharing this with you, going back to the idea of strangers, is most likely there was this strong sense of familiarity between two people. There was this sense that we were very similar to one another, that we might have shared our same values. And because we were in the same proximity with one another, our lifestyles could blend together. And for those who follow my work, you know about my relationship iceberg. I won't be pulling up the sheet today. But just like an iceberg, there's the tip of the iceberg, and that's the chemistry piece. And below the iceberg is where compatibility lies. And as I started to share, shared values, blendable lifestyles, and more importantly, emotional maturity. Emotional maturity. And so today, the reason why dating is so frustrating for many is, as I said, we're meeting total strangers because we use our devices. Do I have my phone here? We use our devices to connect with people. Now, the benefit of that is we would connect with people who wouldn't otherwise be in our orbit, in our orbit. And by the way, for those that believe or meeting organically is better, here's the thing, folks. You can meet people organically that are narcissists, that are sociopaths, that are borderline personality, that are bipolar personality disorder, and they literally are riddled with flaws. So you can meet them organically or you can meet them online, okay? They're, you know, human beings are flawed, are flawed. It's just a part of the, the journey. Each person has their own journey to what I believe is inner peace because sadly, most people are suffering on the inside of, I'm not good enough, I'm not lovable, and I'm not likable. And this is true of men and women alike. Now I know from a dating perspective, when you see incredibly successful men that have bravado and they come on strong and because they have the financial resources, you know, that might seem incredibly attractive. And certainly if you're an ego-based person, whether you're a man or woman, if you're operating from an ego, from predominantly from ego, you're gonna be highly attracted to that type of personality. But that doesn't mean that they're any more qualified to be in a relationship. In fact, most humans have weak relationship skills. Think about that. I mean, right off the bat, here in the United States, we have a 50% divorce rate. And by the way, I would suspect those other 50% that are not divorced, are probably half of those people are in miserable relationships because they don't have the skills to actually really build a relationship with someone. This is why I continually recommend to my clientele, read the book, Eight Dates by Drs. John and Julie Gottman. Read this book so you can understand the mechanics to a healthy, happy relationship. 
because for a guy to think about you all the time so you can be on his mind that he cares about you, it starts from being in a place of emotional maturity, or excuse me, yes, emotional maturity. And if I really, so first off, well, it requires to be emotionally mature. And at the same time, what are most humans lacking? Emotional safety, emotional safety. I want you to really think about this. We're blessed now to live in a time where we don't have to think about our physical safety. I mean, I can only imagine what it was like a thousand years ago where you had to be a constant edge to worry about whether or not the tiger is going to eat you or the, the enemy clan was going to come and take, you know, uh, you know, kill every, every man and take every woman and child away. I mean, imagine what it must have been like to live in that environment. I think watching Game of Thrones makes me think about that frequently among some of the other shows out there. And I'm laughing, but also in a sad way, well, actually in a, in a, a beneficial way, we don't live in that type of environment anymore where we're worried about our uh, physical safety. And so this, what's happening today in our dating, mating, and relating realm is really to feel emotionally safe with someone. And how can we feel emotionally safe with someone when we're meeting total strangers? This is why I continually now am recommending this new book for everyone called Talking to Strangers, Talking to Strangers by Malcolm Gladwell, What You Should Know About the People You Don't Know. Folks, the day, the. The current dating rhetoric is so hyper-focused on chemistry and attraction and romance as a way to hook someone. You know, there's this almost, for some women, not all, thankfully, but for a big percentage of women, you have this grand expectation of being romanced, which certainly feels good. When someone is, is devoting a ton of energy to you, especially on the first date, when they're giving you tons of energy, and I don't mean from a love bombing perspective or, or a dominant perspective, I'm just saying they are genuinely, you know, wanting to make you happy, that can feel good. That certainly sounds great, but what's the motivation when somebody is operating from that place? Are they operating from a place of, do they wanna have sex with you or are they looking to form a healthy, happy relationship? And it takes time. It takes roughly about 100 hours of face-to-face -face time just to build the layer, first layer of trust. And remember I said earlier, emotional safety is where we're struggling with today because most humans aren't spending that 100 hours getting to actually know one another. It's the, the, the dating rhetoric is hyper-focused on attraction and romance and not intimacy. Intimacy. Into me you see. Into me you see. And it requires being, at least my invitation for everyone, it requires being radically honest with one another, which is why I'm now recommending this book, Emotional Safety, or Emotional Intimacy, so you can actually understand what intimacy is. Because these days, I gotta tell you, people are dating with this kind of premise. How's your day going? I hope you're having a good day. Did you have a good day? I hope you have a blessed day. And I'm being, I know this is sound, this rhetoric, you're probably getting tired of it, but it's because everything is above the surface and not below the surface of actually getting to know someone in a truly heart-centered way. So I recently shared um, a couple uh, in a couple live streams and I've now posted the clips by the time this is uh, I'm recording this ahead of time by the time this is um, uh, premiered. I shared with you I shared with my audience about a woman I recently met online. And what's interesting to me, a couple things. I shared a lot. I shared my anxiety, and I, it's fascinating to me what I'm experiencing. And I, I'm just recognizing that, as much work as I do on myself, I am still a human being, riddled with flaws. I am riddled with um, grand expectations. I, I, I experience many of the same frustrations. Um, that many of you are experiencing, whether it's a man or a woman. So I like to share these with my audience to get an understanding that human beings aren't perfect and the current dating rhetoric is so hyper-focused on trying to change who you are as a person, change who you are as a person, instead of actually appreciating who you are as a person and growing from the inside out. This is why I continually recommend my book 
What the heck is self-love anyway? What the heck is self-love anyway? By the way, there's a link to all the books I recommend. Because ultimately, it's not about being mated with someone else. And I apologize for the grinding noise outside. It's not about being mated with someone else. It's about learning to be mated with yourself. Because it starts with the tribe of one, yourself. And then the next part of your tribe is your mate, is your mate. And this is why coming back to, and I'll, I'll lean into what the answer is to this, uh, this video in just a moment, what's gonna make a guy think about you nonstop. Um, finding that mate where you share the same values, where your lifestyles can blend together, and most importantly, are they emotionally mature? And I'm going to share it in a second, but really quickly, my t-shirt is the Partridge family. <laughs> I, you know, for those who follow my, by the way, if you like this shirt, please post a comment below. I like to change these up every video. Um, it's kind of like one of my signatures. I'm always a big Partridge family fan. I loved Shirley Jones. I had a crush on her in, uh, when I was growing up. Anyways, coming back to this conversation. Uh, mm. By the way, a gift from one of you sweet ladies out there. Thank you for this Nemo mug. I so appreciate it. So appreciate it. Let's go swimming, Dory. So I was sharing a moment ago about a date I had. And what I appreciated about something that happened on the date, and this is getting me to think about her quite a bit, was after, you know, in the beginning of the date, she said that she thought I looked much better than my photographs, which I really do appreciate, and I felt the same about her. And as we started to get to know one another, she said something to me that really resonated with me. It really kind of hooked me. And she said, I like you, Jonathan. I like you. She said, I like you, Jonathan. And I gotta tell you, I stood up taller and I felt more, you know, more, um, um, empowered when I heard that because when somebody says the words I like you it's like saying I admire you it's like saying I respect you it's like saying I appreciate you I appreciate you when somebody says I like you to a person and I don't mean just from it didn't feel like a you know I'm she I she put me in the friend zone I think she, what she was really saying is, I like you as a person. I like you as a person. Do you remember earlier when I said the number one emotional health issue for most humans is, I'm not good enough, I'm not lovable, and I'm not likable? To want to be liked is what many people are thirsty for, men and women alike, to be liked for who they are. Not to have to change who you are to make someone like you, to be liked for who you are. And this is, by the way, what I'm sharing is, I, I said the same things to her, actually, I said the exact same thing to her, not as a um, response to her, I said it later, because I, 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 I really said I admire what you've accomplished in your professional life, I truly respect what you've done, and I appreciate your kindness to me. I admire you, I respect you, I appreciate you. You know, for a healthy, happy relationship to form these days, it requires what's known as the four A's, the four A's. And I'm gonna quickly uh, jump into this because this is so critically important. To really build, to build a bond with someone during those first 100 hours, to build it so strong that you want to stay together, that you think about each other all the time. The four A's, attention, affection, appreciation, and acceptance, attention. When you give someone your undivided attention, you're not on your phones all the time, you're not thinking about this, you're not thinking about, you're in your, you're present with a human being. Attention, affection, to be touched. I mean, humans are craving physical touch right now. I know some of you are all paranoid because of COVID. And, I mean, listen, if you're gonna meet someone for a date and you're gonna be, you know, in close proximity, then don't be afraid. I don't mean on a first date you have to touch someone, but certainly once you start forming a relationship, touch is so important. We humans are craving physical touch. In fact, most people's top love language, when at least one, two, or three, is physical touch. Certainly I know this is true for men and women alike. 
attention, affection, appreciation, to genuinely say thank you, beyond thank you, I appreciate you for who you are. I appreciate what you do for me. Do you know men's, one of men's biggest complaints after divorce is they felt unappreciated in their marriage, especially those men that were provider protectors. They felt so unappreciated and lastly accepted for who they are. You want to be accepted for who you are. Men want to be accepted for who we are. There's an old saying, men marry women hoping they don't change and women marry men hoping they change. Folks, when we get to midlife, we are grooved in. I mean, we are grooved in. I mean, I mean, many people are set in their way. So the expectation for someone to be different is setting yourself up for failure because ultimately what men and women alike want to feel accepted. And so if you're not, if you really want to build a healthy, happy relationship with someone, I highly recommend reading the book, How to Make Love All the Time by Barbara DeAngelis. This is a great roadmap to build that deeper intimacy that builds that bond together that makes it difficult to break. And so it starts by leaning in with the simple phrase, I like you, which conveys, I admire you, I respect you, and I appreciate you. And I would also include those words in your conversations, I admire you, I respect you, I appreciate you, because that's going to make a man feel good about himself. And by the way, folks, and let me just say this, this isn't about making a man feel good about himself. He should be doing the exact same things with you. Everything I share in my videos is a two lane street. You are both making effort mutually because the current dating rhetoric is set up by, is set up for failure. All you do is sit back in your feminine energy and a guy is supposed to claim you. That's not working, folks. What's gonna work? is mutual effort with one another. We need to, I'd like to encourage everyone to throw out the old dating book and start from a new premise. Now I recognize this is very hard because as I said before, we're meeting total strangers and we don't feel emotionally safe. This is why it's imperative to do a better job asking questions before you ever start to engage in a relationship. And by the way, check out the link below to a free discovery call with me because my area of expertise is learning how to what I call pre-qualify your prospect. Pre-qualify your prospect. Is he worthy to even make that investment for the first date? And when you learn the skills based on your personality, which questions to ask, you can eliminate a lot of the wrong guys way sooner and you get to be teed up, using a golfing reference, you get to be teed up for the right guy much quicker. So check out that link to a free discovery call. Okay, so just to wrap this up, I invite you all to start being more intentional in the dating process. And it starts by you know, really recognizing, is this person, and they have to be worthy of it too for you to say, I like them. And if they are, don't be afraid to speak up because here's the thing. If it's sincere and from the heart, you really can't say the wrong thing to the right guy, and that's my invitation for you going forward. Are you with me? If you are, give me a thumbs up or post a comment below. All right, we're gonna wrap up this video as I always do. First off, giving myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Bear hug of self-love. I'm gonna reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm gonna ask you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, teddy bear, or a pillow, and give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. Thanks a bunch. <laughs> Bye-bye now.